Let's start this all off by learning how to create this lovely little pencil pot here. Now I am going to be doing this for precision modeling, but don't worry you hard surface modelers out there, you can definitely learn how to use plasticity from this, just ignore the whole unit side of things. So I'm going to start with a brand new file here, pressing control N. And while this is reloading, remember that I have a video before this one, really advise you to watch it because it gives you a rundown of the UI very quickly, how to install it, how to go about giving feedback and the shortcut sheet, which are going to be down in the description. And expect things to go wrong because plasticity is very much still in development right this minute and make sure that you're using the correct version of plasticity for this course. So from here, let's go and do sort of the first thing, which is plasticity workflow 101 is usually starting from a sketch or you can start from a primitive solid here, but we're going to start from sketch to solid sketch, create a solid as well as cutting away from a solid with a sketch in this video. So I'm going to click right here. This is going to create a corner rectangle. The shortcut is shift Q. Then I'm going to click on the origin point. Remember that if you don't know the 3d space, just move around. It will tell you what it is. And I'm just going to click and drag and click once again. We're are currently in an active operation. And how do we know that? Well, there's gizmos on the screen here that we can interact with. There's some new shortcuts on the bottom right, and there is a box on the bottom left here, which lets you interact with what is currently active as well. Now, there's also this new menu down here, which is the context menu. And this basically, whenever you have something selected, it lets you know what you can do with it. So from here, I'm going to actually be using the shortcuts mainly, but just let you know that you can use it by this. You can hold down left click and then put in a unit amount. So for instance, seven, then let go of left click, or you can press D for the width. I'm going to put in 50 here and hit enter. That has confirmed the unit input, not confirmed the operation. To confirm an operation, it is right click. To cancel an operation, it is escape. So I'm going to press F here, type in 100, hit enter, and now I'm going to confirm this with right click, and that has confirmed it. Now this is really big. So to see it all, I'm going to press forward slash to fit it on my screen. Now for you precision modelers, you might be wondering, okay, you just did 50 whatnots and 100 whatnots. What exactly is this dimension? Well, I like to think of it as millimeters, but in reality, if you did one unit by one unit inside of plasticity and then export that as an OBJ, that's actually going to be 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters meters, what I do is just divide it by 0.01 inside of Blender. And we'll do that in the next video. And I'll show you the entire workflow. Okay, so here is your first closed sketch. Let's talk about what exactly is going on, why this is flashing and all of that. Well, that's got to do with all of these lovely selection options. So we've got control point selection, edge selection, both for curves and solids, face selection, both for curves and solids, and full solid selection. And remember, those are one, two, three, four, and tab to turn them all on. And sometimes you have to have nothing selected to make sure that tab works. So number one for this control point selection, this lets you select the control points here. You can also do a drag box to select a whole bunch. Number two, this is the edge selection edge selection right there. Number three, this is face selection. When you left click on a face, there will be an automatic operation. This one just happens to be the extrude operation here. Just very quickly, I'll show you. You can pull this out. You can click and drag this one. This is the thickness. There's also a whole bunch of things that you can do it in this way, or there's all of the ones down here as well. And then this one does the race. Now I'm going to cancel that with an escape. And now let's do solid. We can't really do solid because there's no solids here. So I'll just press tab to select it all. Now let's quickly go over these little bits here. Well, we've got these little dots, which let you drag and do a lovely bevel. You can't do it the other way and do a chamfer though. When you do it this way and let go, you get this arrow. You can pull it back to sort of go back to a point. And remember when you're holding down left click, you can put in a unit amount. So for instance, 15 and let go. Now these little arrows let you drag the edges. I'm just going to undo twice. I'm going to grab this edge here and I'm going to put in minus 20. So now this is going to be 80 by 50. Okay, now let's talk about how sketches interact with one another or curves interact with one another. So I'm going to bring in another corner rectangle here, click and click. And here we have it, right click to confirm. And let's make these overlap each other. When they overlap each other, you can see that all of it is flashing. That is because this is seen as one face that you can extrude complete like that. So I'll hit escape to cancel that. So what happens when 
we've got one inside of one another. Well, then this turns into a cutaway operation, and you can see this is a lovely little cutaway. So what if you wanted to cut away, for instance, like this, and just cut that bit out? For that, you need to trim the curve, and it's right here, the cutoff line segment at intersection of curves, or the shortcut of T. This lets you then select around. We can cut all of these right here. That's perfect. And then we can do a nice little face selection. Right click to confirm that face selection here. Pull that up and take a look. These are two separate curves though right this minute. And what does that mean? That means that right here you won't be able to add a fillet. If you want to fillet these, you have to select them both go down to the context menu and there's a join curves here. We'll press J to join the curves. You'll see we have one curve here at the moment. Unfortunately, you cannot rename right this minute, but I have a feeling that's coming in the March update. And let's go and use the shortcut of D to fill it all. So I'll press D and then I'll pull this out and I'm filleting it all right there. Okay, let's undo a couple of times with control Z till we get to this point here. I'll select this curve here, press X to delete. You can see the little trash there on the content text menu and delete that away. I'm going to select this face, extrude this up, type in 50. I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm. Now let's talk about solid selection. So I'm going to deselect by clicking out here. So now with it deselected, I cannot select an edge right away because everything is currently active. I have to select the solid object first, and then that will let me select the edges and faces. However, if I did just have, for instance, face selection on, I could just go in and select the faces. So that's one thing to be aware of. I'll press tab to select everything, select the solid. Let's select this edge right here. And this is going to have the automatic operation of a fillet. Going in the positive gives you a bell bevel. Going in the negative gives you a chamfer. You also have this little circle here, which gives you the chamfer angle. And you've also got the same on the bevel for the chamfer angle right there. Now, if you want to sort of undo a chamfer or a bevel, you can do that. Just select that face. And then this here gives you a nice little dialogue to just pull it all the way out and it's done. Right click to confirm that. So I'm going to select that edge once again, and I'm going to pull this to 30. I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm it. So let's talk about when we do a face selection here. What exactly is this offset face and why is this an offset face? But then when we go down into the context menu, there's an offset loop. Well, offset loop is actually doing the loop offset for a curve and the offset face is different depending on the surface itself. For instance, if we do an offset face on a flat surface, this is actually going to let us pull this all the way up like so, or I can cancel it with escape. We also get this nice little sort of weird degree change right here, or when we're dealing with a fillet or a chamfer, as you've seen, that lets you add more a takeaway. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna select this face and I'll bring this up by 50. There we have it. I'm gonna right click and I'm happy with that. So let's create some sketches from these faces to then cut away from it. I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing cutaways. Remember, cutaways are called booleans. So I'll select this face and I want to grab sort of the outline of this and I'm going to be doing that with the offset loop. So I'll press O and as you see, we're pulling this like that. I'm going to type in zero, hit enter, go right click. And now we have this sort of curved curve. Unfortunately, these curved curves currently aren't really that useful. We need to flatten this. And to flatten these, I'm going to actually use the transforms. Now, the transforms are like Blender transforms, G to move, R to rotate, S to scale. So I'll press S. I'm going to go and scale this just on the Z. And then I'm going to type in zero, hit enter, right click to confirm that operation. And I'm happy with that. So now I want to move this up and snap it to that point there. So G to move. I'm going to move this on the Z, bring it up. And to snap, this isn't on the shortcuts, but if you hold down control, this activates snapping. And I'm going to snap right there. Brilliant. Right click to confirm. Now I want to do an offset of this edge. Now, what I mean by offset, I mean a loop offset. So the offset loop, let's find it. There it is. O once again. So I'll press O. And now look at the arrow. Going up with the arrow increases. Going downwards is minus. So I'm going to go minus two. 
I'm happy with that. Enter, then right click to confirm. This is exactly the behavior that we're expecting from this. So I'm going to select this outside curve and click X to delete it as you see it right there in the context. So I'll press X, delete that away. I'm going to select now this face. Remember, we have to select into the solid object, then select the face, or you can have just the face selection to select directly the face. I'll press O, take a look at the arrow. The arrow is going up. I'm going to go minus. So I'm going to go minus two. Brilliant. Hit enter, then right click. And I'm happy with that. So we're going to go and do this in two different ways. I'm going to select the edge of this loop here. So let's do exactly that. Selected that. Is that the right one? That is not the right one. I want this loop edge here, please. Now, if I can't select it, I might have to hide this. So let's do exactly that. So let's press four for solid selection. Select this solid, press H to hide it. I'm now going to do a face selection. So here we have it. Press three, face selection. I'm going to extrude this up by 97. I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm. And I now want to bring back my solid. To bring it back, it is Alt H to unhide everything. You can also hide things right here by just using the little eyes. Okay, now let's bring this down by 97. So I'll press four for solid selection. Select this, press G, then Z go down by minus 97. Brilliant. I'm happy with that. Then hit enter, right click to confirm. So how do we do a Boolean cutaway? We'll select what it is you want to cut from. So I'm selecting this one here, then select the cutting implement. Currently we have X-ray on, which is Alt Z by default. It's usually on. Hold down shift, left click it. Brilliant. Now let's take a look at the context menu down here. Here it is, Boolean, that is Q. So I'll press Q. By default, it is a difference. And if you wanted a union, it's Q once again. But I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm. And that has now cut that away. You can have issues with perfect coplanar faces. So just think that if that's the case, just extrude that up a tiny little bit there. And we'll go over extrusions later on. Don't worry. So let's show you the other way of doing this. I'm going to press tab to turn on all my selection. I'm going to select my solid object. Then I'm going to shift select this face. Now by default, you can now pull this down. I want to type in minus 97 and that is going to automatically do a Boolean. I'm going to right click to confirm and I'm happy with that. I'm going to select these edges here and just hide them away with H because we don't need them there. Okay. Now do be aware, especially for you precision modelers, this corner right here is infinitely sharp. So we've got to deal with that. And the way that I want to deal with it is just select it. And I'm going to go minus 10, minus 10 to give it a nice little chamfer like so. Right click to confirm that. I'm going to turn off my X-ray now with Alt Z and I want to select the edges right here. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble selecting it. So the quickest way to do this is know that there is some special sort of selection things here, which is going from left to right. If we go into the object first, left to right, whatever is fully inside of that drag box will be selected. If you go right to left, it will select absolutely everything. Let's just go into edge selection quickly so I can show you. Here you see, going from right to left selects everything, from left to right selects what's inside of it. So I'm gonna go and select these two here, holding down shift to select those, and I'm gonna do this one by five. Brilliant, right click to confirm, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna select these two edges up here as well. I'm happy with that, I want shift, oop. See, I accidentally had a movement there, so I've gotta click escape to cancel that operation. Click it, and now let's do the operation here. And I'm going to do this by two. Brilliant. Right click to confirm. And as you've seen, automatically it's removed that edge that was there and turned this into a full curved surface. So I can actually press three, select this face, and instead of doing this offset, I'm going to press E to do an extrusion. So right here is the extrude, and extrusion here can sometimes work like an extrude manifold in Blender in the sense that I can go upwards or I can go downwards. So I'm going to go right 
right click i'm going to go minus 10 i'm happy with that there and i'm going to right click to confirm that and we're almost there i just want to add some bevels to this back edge here so i'll press 2 for my edge selection i want to turn on x-ray once again with alt z and let's select those edges right there i'm going to deselect that edge there go around to this side, hold down shift, select those edges there. I'm happy with all of that selected there, brilliant. Let's select that one there, make sure, there it is. Then let's pull this, let's go by 15. I'm happy with that, right click, and there we have our very first one. Now, I do wanna just quickly show you how to make this look pretty and all the rest, because I know that's one of the best things about this. So let's go right here, we have our render view. You can right click this and turn this into a shiny object, or you can use these two other ones to see how light is going to reflect off it. Or if you wanna go into the material view, just go and click on render. It's gonna turn this into a shiny metal object. Now to change the actual sort of material of this, the shortcut is M, but make sure that your object, your solid is selected. So I'll press four, select this, then I'll press M. And here I can change the metal. Let's change this to 0.1. And then I'm also gonna change my roughness to, let's go for one. And then I'll change the color here to a nice blue, for instance. And maybe the IOR, I'll bring this up or down. Let's go down here, brilliant, I'm happy with that. Right click to confirm. Let's right click here, show edges, turn them off, and here we have it. Okay, now make sure that you save this, of course. So here's our save. Remember, we've got Command or Control S to save. And also, we will cover this in the next video. Here is the OBJ save. So I will see you in the next video where we take this into Blender. Now, if you want to share what you're making or get a little bit of help with plasticity, you can join the Maker Tales Discord where I have a plasticity channel right there, or you can try and join the plasticity Discord. And information for that will be down in the description or in the top pinned comment where I'll be keeping that as up to date as possible. If you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, you can join this lovely group of Xteam people, my lovely patrons. Thank you so very much. And a big thank you to my VIP makers, Jem Oskinacht and David Fernandez. It really means the world to me. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.